Good morning. This is Erica with Launching Legacies. Welcome back to our devotional. So I want to continue where we left off yesterday. We talked about the process by which we get to um, have this relationship with God and we're remembering Him. I started the process of remembering the work that Christ has done daily by taking communion daily, right? Because t communion is is intended to remind us of the work that Christ did. And that's essential to having an intimate relationship with God, particularly now because we, we recognize that Christ will come again. He will usher us into heaven. But we are having the relationship with God that God always wanted us to have. That's made possible because of the work of Christ. So we, we learn to be recreated in the area of remembering. But here goes the, the end pause because it, became a, it becomes a really uh, strong area or a contender against your attention. And that is trust. So as I started uh, my process, I was was hesitant to to do to quit my job, but I finally did it. Then I was hesitant to start the organization, thinking I may not have the right skill sets, but I learned to trust God, and I did that. Then I realized I needed to kind of reframe my whole identity in in Christ, and so I walked forth to do that. And after doing that, then I decided um, that I needed to do something that reminded me every day of what Christ, the love of God, was shown to me through Christ. And so I started taking communion daily and remembering the work that Christ had done for me. And so, th so that brings us to this point. I started to um, interact with other people organizations, companies, people, um, and I, and I was doing the work, right? I was, I was counseling, I was coaching, I was doing family education and I was moving forth. But what started to really make me shaky was when things stopped, weren't always working out. So I'll explain what that means. I would be, uh, make, I would go in and, and talk to, uh, maybe a, a pastor or a minister. And, and that was most, most common, a pastor or a minister. And they would, they would be really excited you know oh yeah I love the work that you're gonna do and then they would start making these promises and so I was like oh my gosh they're making all these promises this is a big deal like they're saying they're gonna do all of these things and they're gonna support us in this way and I'm like oh thank you God you know I'm so glad you gave me the courage to ask and then over time those promises and the things that they said they were gonna do will fall through they 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 wouldn't follow up on them and I would follow up with the person and say remember we talked about this and the, and the person would wasn't doing what they said they would do. And so it became a really a big issue for me because I was like, Lord, uh, the people, they keep saying they're going to do stuff and they're not doing it. Why are they saying they're going to do it? Like, I didn't need them to say, yes, I'm going to do 10 things. I, I was coming asking for one and they promised 10. Why are they promising 10 things if they know they, they're not even going to do the one? And so it became this big place of contention for me. And really, I started to draw back and like, okay, maybe I wasn't clear or maybe I, I didn't understand. And I went and I asked and I wasn't supposed to. Maybe this is not working out for me. So I started to have this big point of disappointment that was deteriorating my trust in, in God. And it was... um. It, it became really evident after this happened several different times. And I remember I was called my dad and I said, dad, they, these people, they, they promise stuff and they don't do what they're promising. And I'm like, who told them to make the promise? <laughs> who told them to do that? And I remember it was a really big place of disappointment. And then and, and in addition to that, my dad, so my dad gave me the word of wisdom. He said, you know what? Don't worry. He says, hope that they do it. He says, but recognize that's how people work. Sometimes they promise things that they can't give. It's just what they do lip service is a part of what you're about to experience. And I was like, okay, but I really wasn't happy with that. But I kind of just took the words of wisdom and moved on. And then I went on and I would start trying to, you know, get something to happen. So I would be like, okay, well, God, um, are we going to have a location or are we going to have this? And, and God would say, yeah, you're going to have it. And I'm like, okay, so he said, yes. So now let me see uh, what happens when we do this. And then nothing would happen. And I'm like, well, he said, yes. So let me see what happens when I do this. And nothing would happen. And I started saying, okay, now it's not just the people. Now is I'm asking you, I'm, I'm asking you what we need to do next or if we're going to have these things. And when I go forth to do it, it's not working out. 
what's that about? Like, I'm, I, I recreated myself. I'm, I'm focused on you. I'm remembering the work that Christ has done. I know that this is not of my own merits, my own skill set, my own abilities. And I'm just, I'm, I'm asking you and you're saying yes. And then I'm deciding to, to, to go forth and, and do what, what you said was going to happen. And it's not happening. And God says, well, yeah. Because it's not necessarily the time you just you just said is this gonna happen and and, and so I I had a problem right and I'm like well wait a minute now you know I mean when I ask if something's gonna happen and if something's gonna play out I'm talking about right now because I'm gonna try it and God was like ministering to my heart and I was reading the scripture and it's like it is good to try and I'm like well why is it good to try something if it's not gonna work out. If I, I've already asked you, is it, you know, can I have it? And you said yes. And then when I try it, it doesn't work out. I don't understand. And God is like, listen, this is not always about achieving what you think you're supposed to have. This is an exercise in trusting. And that's necessary for this mature faith. And I needed to sit down and learn a little bit. So my one of my favorite scriptures, Deuteronomy 33 and 3, is that the Lord truly loves his people. They sit at his feet and are taught of him. And so I, I I did that. I said, well, let me let me go back to school in this area because I don't understand trust. I thought that if I put my trust in you, you demonstrate trust to me by doing what I put my trust in you for. And that's how we get to trust. And God says, but, but that was beginning trust. Now we're into an advanced stage of trust. Will you trust me if what you ask for, you don't get? Hmm. Will you trust me and my character to be what it is, even if you think it's going to be a yes, you knock on the door and the answer is no? Will you learn to trust me beyond the people, knowing that if I have something for you, I'll get it to you at all costs? And it won't be because of this minister or this person promising something or getting excited and, you know, charismatic about who you are and what you're doing. It'll be because I have intended for you to have it and therefore you shall have it. Do you trust that? And, and do you trust that sometimes it is a yes, but it's not the way that you think the yes is going to come through or the time that you think the yes is going to come through. He says, because real trust doesn't require me to perform for you. It requires you to undoubtedly believe that I'm already worked it out. I've already worked it out in your benefit. I've already worked it out in the time that it needs to be worked out. I've already worked it out with the people who it needs to be worked out with and the location that it needs to be worked out with. You see, the details are in my hand is the trust I need you to believe in. That yes, you should knock on the door because that's an act of saying, I believe that God is going to do it. But if nobody answers the door or if they answer the door and they, and they say no, or if they slam the door in your face and they're even assertive or aggressive against you, it doesn't mean that I'm not trustworthy. It means that that's not the place yet. And that's not the one yet, or that's not the where to go yet. And how are you going to know that? By praying, believing, and asking, and going. And it's like, well, wait a minute. You know, it was it sounded fine, but it's like, okay, but wait, wait a minute. I could be knocking on a door and, and get 10 no's. And God's like, yes, but am I still trustworthy? Like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure why you would have me knock on these 10 doors if you were trustworthy. Seems like a waste of time. And God's like, in the mind of a man who doesn't fully understand is trustworthy. But in the mind of God, I am developing you to fully rely on me. And when the thing and things go well or when they don't go well, know that I am still trustworthy, that I'm not being sadistic by having you knock on a door and the people say, no, I'm just getting you used to knocking on doors. I'm not having you to be um, to look like a fool by asking somebody for something and then they renege and don't do what they're what they say they're going to do. I'm getting you into the practice of asking. I'm not having you be, you know, immature or naive by asking for 
for things that seem like out of the scope of a person to give you because I'm getting you into the mind of thinking big and expecting blessings to come from unexpected sources. He said, listen, I want you to trust me wholly and your whole character needs to be completely inclined to it. If everything you ask for, you get immediately and every door you knock on opens for you immediately, then you're not developing. You're just maintaining. But as you uh, incur obstacles in trusting me and you incur hard times in trusting me, yet I remain faithful to you, right? Your needs are still cared for. You're still in the place that you need to be. Everything that you have really needed and, and the connections you really, that really blessed you are still happening. When you get that together, then you'll realize completely and totally that this trust is not in you or the, or people. This trust is only in me. And yes, you're asking and sometimes the people aren't doing what they're saying they're doing. And there's other dynamics in that picture too. I could be working on the person that answers the door when you knock. I could be working on the person who talks too much and makes promises that they know they can't fulfill. I I could be working on the on the system. I could be working on I could be working on all different types of things, but your ability to fully trust is essential. And the scripture that accompanies that I had already known, but you know I had to revisit the scripture. It was a, a very a very common scripture to me and it likely will be one for you. And the scripture that accompanies this conversation with God in which he encourages me that trust doesn't always look like what we think it's going to look like. With humans we more, more than often we want to test it if, it, if they're trustworthy, they'll prove their trust through the actions that they do or do not do, right? But with God, trusting is in the hands of an infinite God that can see all and knows all. What is that going to look like in your life? Nobody can tell you. That I don't know how many doors you're going to knock on before one opens. But if God said that, that the door will open and he told you to go knock, then knocking is what you need to trust God to do. But it's not always the things that we think. And it's not always the ways that we that we feel like we're going to go. Sometimes we think we're going to go straight up the mountain. And God is like, no, I'm going to have you go around the mountain five times. <laughs> and then up a, a curvy path through the back. And you're like, why was all that necessary? Well, there's something in you that you need to trust that God is doing. And there's something in time that you need to trust that God is doing. And there's something in other people that you need to trust that God is doing. And there's something in environment that you need to trust that God is doing. Here goes the thing. When we talk about trusting God, it becomes a real test because there are so many components that you need to trust that God is handling. In, in totality, his sovereignty, which means rule over all things, is what you really have to learn to trust. And that is almost always a difficult journey. Because we don't truly think of anything else as sovereign. Trusting that they have every single component of our life and this world under their hand. And they are the final authority for every decision that's made. Hmm. That's a big deal. And so the scripture, Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Am I going to get the location, Lord? Yes. But how am I going to get it? Not by your own understanding, right? Not your own way. Not in your own ideas. Not in your own makeup. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he will direct your paths. He will make your paths straight. It says, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. <laughs> so what is he saying? But and I and I like it, nourishment to your bones. What is he talking about? Is it, are these natural bones or are these spiritual bones, right? What is God really developing when we learn to trust him with all our heart and lean not to our own understandings? Yes, you can have it. When can you have it? Yes, you can have it. Where can you have it? Yes, you can have it. How can you have it? Yes, you can have it, but with whom can you have it? Trusting God, he has the details in order, is essential to moving forward in a mature faith. It doesn't always look like you think it's going to look like, and there's a reason for that. So I want to encourage you to think about your faith and think about, is it a relentless faith? faith? Is it something that can be tested and tried? And when it's tested and tried, how will it come out? Will it come out like the word says, as pure gold? Or will it come out dismantled and broken apart, no good to anyone else? 
as we develop mature faith, it's essential that we understand that trusting God has more to do than just saying, oh, I believe him. It means literally walking with him. God bless you. I'll be praying for you. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow for another devotional.